कृष्ण गुरु महाराज दंडवत प्रणाम सपना बेसिल ृष्ण <laughs> नाम विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम ने नमस्ते सरस्वत देव गौरवाणी प्रचारण निर्विशेषा सिंहवादी पश्चाय दशतारण हरे कृष्ण टूडे वे विल डिस्कस द Third chapter of the first canto. Krishna is the source of all incarnations. Verses 31 till 44. So we will finish the chapter today. That. Um, so we discussed last time already in verse 30 about the Vishvarup, which is imaginary. So we continue with text 31, 32, uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Text 31. Yab yata nabasi me khaku rena rufa pakti vonile evam trastari dristyat fan. Aropitam abu dibi. Clouds and clouds and dust are carried by the air, but less intelligent persons say that the sky is cloudy and the air is dirty. Similarly, they also implant material conceptions on the spirit self. Ata param yada vyaktam ayuda guna primitam. Adristas rutavastus fat yajivo yat punar bhava. Beyond this gross conception of form is another subtle conception of form, which is without formal shape, 
and is unseen, unheard, and unmanifest. The living being has his form beyond his subtlety. Otherwise, he could not have repeated birth. So there must be a subtle body to go, to move from one body to another. And But our form is spiritual. The soul is beyond that. That uh, So, <coughs> there is a conception of the gross form and there is another conception of the subtle form. It's said here. The subtle form is unheard and unseen. So, the impersonalists, they want to meditate either on the gross form of the fish farup or they want to, to meditate on the subtle form, the unheard, the unseen, the unmanifested, which they conceive as being without form. <coughs> Text 33. Yatre me sat asat rupi pratisides for some vida avitya yatmani kriti iti tat brahmadakshanam. Whenever a person experienced by self realization that the gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with the pure self, at that time he sees himself as well as the Lord. We have heard that before. Tristva evat manishvari. This here, iti tat brahma darshanam, brahma darshanam. That uh, seeing the absolute truth. So, Srila Prabhupada in the purport, in the second half of the first paragraph, he, he explains what it means. Jivan mukti. Jivan mukti. A, a man who is engaged in activities of the self is called Jivan Mukta. Yeah. This is this first from the nectar of devotion which defines Jivan Mukta. That uh, it's a uh, Um, this verse Shivan Mukta Sa Uchati Yeah Ya Yasyari Dasi Karmanamana Sagari Nikilash Apavashta Su Chivan Mukta Sa Uchati When we engage in the transcendental service of the Lord in body, mind and word is considered liberated in all conditions of material existence. Jivan Mukta also. So Srila Prabhupada more or less says the same in this purport, but then in the second part of the, or, or, in the middle of the second paragraph, he says, he writes, And by culture of transcendental knowledge, when the living being prays to the Lord for deliverance from the clutches of forgetfulness, the Lord, by his causeless mercy, removes removes the living being's illusory curtain and thus realizes his own self. He then engages himself in the service of the Lord in his eternal constitutional position. Becoming liberated from the conditioned life, all this is executed by the Lord either through his external potency or directly by the internal potency. Yeah. So this will be more elaborately explained in the next verse. Next verse speaks about the Lord's external potency. That uh, text 434. Yatye <coughs> devi maya vasharati mati sampana eviti vidur if the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then he becomes at once enlightened with self-realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. Now in this purpose, 
some there is an uh, an interesting statement <laughs> we, we are go three, going three sentences down then the same energy acts as its external internal and marginal energies so for question it's all the same energy that external inner, internal and marginal energy and by its omnipotency it can perform anything and everything through the agency of one of the above energies so krishna can can decide oh i want to i want my energy to act spiritually or i want my energy to act materially that uh, it can interchange internal external marginal and use it for any purpose <laughs> it can turn the external into internal by its will <laughs> therefore by its grace the external energy which is employed in illusioning illusioning those living beings who want to have it subsides by the will of the lord in terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned souls so this is very interesting i'm going to read that part again so the the illusory energy subsides by the will of the lord that in terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned soul if we, if we feel repentance repentant or we do penance then it subsides interesting that it's an interesting statement by Srila Prabhupada <laughs> so the external energy subsides in terms of repentance and penance that uh, uh, Shivan Prabhuva, are you not able to hear us? Is there a problem? Hey. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Hey, Maharaj, I am unable to understand these verses, but they are trying to say 31, 32, 33. Yeah, we will discuss that at the end then. Hmm? At okay. the end. We, we first go to the verses and then uh, we come back to it. No problem. So, if we use the material energy for spiritual purposes and for penances and repentance, then it changes its nature. Interesting. You may fall down as a devotee, but if you feel repentance, then that, help you, that helps you to advance in spiritual life. That's uh, this important information. Of course, Bhagavad Gita 1515, there it is said. The super soul is covering, but with the same energy can give knowledge if the conditions if the conditions are fulfilled. If you repent that uh, so that's interesting. Bhagavad Gita seven four fourteen. Deva yes yesa guna mai. This energy is divine. How can this be? How can this material energy to be divine? Deva yesa guna mai. <laughs> Krishna orders, you must re you, you must release this living entity. So Krishna can order that. If you surrender to Krishna, Krishna orders that. <laughs> of course, we have in Bhagavad Gita also 7.25. Yoga Maya Samavrita. I'm covered by my Yoga Maya. My spiritual energy is covering me. You find that also in Shia Sepanisat. The spiritual seeker is praying there to the Lord at the end, the last verses. Please. Take away your dazzling effulgence. By your Brahman effulgence, your spiritual energy, I cannot see you. <laughs> it's, co it's covering by that also. Covering by a Maya, material energy, and by his yoga, my spiritual energy. Two coverings. So my spiritual energy is covering me, of course, for Krishna. 
all these energies are spiritual. So by penance and engagement in devotional service, one shows that Krishna is one shows to Krishna I'm serious. I want I want to make progress. That uh, Mother Narayan, she said, <coughs> you may come to a certain point in your devotional service from Shraddha to Prima when you start repenting. That. And you start to feel sorry for all the things you did, why you came in this world. <coughs> that uh, When you see yourself feeling like this, then you can understand that Krishna is removing the external energy. Then the material energy is sub subsiding. It is good to repent. repent when, when you repent, <coughs> you won't do it again. That's the point. Repentance means that genu you feel genuinely sorry. And you won't do it again. Much, when Maharaj Brixit heard about the curse, he thought, this curse is very good. It's very good, it's nice. So, so I won't make the, the same mistake again that I offended this sage. I will not do it again. This is good for me. Such repentance delivers the devotee from ac accidentally committed sin, from all kinds of sins accidentally committed. That's in the purpose of Srila Prabhupada, in the purpose of 119.1, at the end of the last chapter, the first verse. In the third canton, the, in the uh, teachings of Lord Kapiladev, the chapter the movements of all the living entities. There is a repentance of living entity in the womb of the mother. The child feels repentant and thinks as soon as, soon as I'm out, I'm going to be a devotee. But as soon as he gets out, he forgets. <laughs> so here it speaks about material and spiritual energy using it interchangeably. So there is an example in Srimad Bhagavatam where material energy acted as spiritual energy. They are both acting the same at the same time in a situation. So two energies, for, for one person the, the energy acted as Mamaya, uh, the, the material energy, and, and for another person in, in the same in, in the same situation, the same pastime, it acted spiritually and gave enlightenment. <coughs> that uh, so can you think about a pastime in the Bhagavatam where that happened? That uh, pastime where both energies were seen at the same time. That so there is a, there are different examples. Fight your not, Prabhu, please. Yeah, there is, I remember, it's not in the Bhagavatam, but there's the story of uh, Narada Muni. He prayed to Lord Krishna that, please show me your external energy. Uh, and uh, Krishna said, you shouldn't see it. You save yourself the trouble. Then Krishna said, okay, bring me a glass of water. Then he, Narada Muni, he experienced a, a big desert, a large desert, and arrived at the palace. And they asked for a glass of water and saw that beautiful girl who gave them a glass and asked him in. Then he experienced household life for so many years 
But then uh, the, the every, the, due to, there was a catastrophe, inundation, and uh, he lost everything. That, that, then, then that same material energy, by showing him that suffering, uh, made him repent and he returned back to Krishna. Krishna asked him, well, uh, where have you been? Where is my glass of water? That story. You must have heard, Mara. Yeah, yeah. There is a similar story in the 12th canto for Markandeya Rishi, Shivan Prabhu. Oh, yes. That, that, yeah. that and, and he wants also to see the illusory energy. He asked for the wrong thing to Narayan Rishi and experienced the, the same pastime for many lifetimes. That, uh, interesting. That, uh, but, uh, there is also a very clear example here in the third count of the Bhagavatam. <laughs> Something happened to a great devotee and he saw the material and spiritual energy at the same time. It was Vidura. Vidura he was insulted by Duryodhan. <laughs> he felt insulted, piercing his heart. Srila Prabhupada wrote that Vidura could see how Duryodhana was under the influence of the external material energy. <laughs> and he could see that he was going to hell. That, uh, at the same time, he saw that the internal energy was working for him, the spiritual energy. He never liked the palace life and the politics. He was always thinking, how am I going to get away from this? And and when I'm actually be able to, when am I going to be able to devote myself to Krishna? And when this happened, when he was insulted by Duryodhana and tossed out of the palace, he felt so happy. Sri Papa wrote that within himself he was think, thinking, thanking Duryodhana. The eternal energy was acting on Vidura and it was acting at, at external energy on Duryodhana. So one is elevated by the same energy and the other is degraded, de degraded by the same energy. So Vidura was very happy because he felt but because he felt obligated to his brother Dhritarashtra. He was thinking <coughs> I have to stay, I have to preach, I have to help them. And finally he was insulted. And then he thought, now my obligation is finished. I'm leaving. My life is for Krishna. And he left. So this is an example of a, a, a internal and external energy working at the same time. <laughs> and we'll see. We will see the beginning of the first verses of the seventh chapter of this canto. There we have Srila Vyasadeva, he will have a vision of the Absolute Truth. And he will see the internal and external energy acting at the same time. He will see how the, all the living entities in the spiritual world are under the inter, in, in, internal energy. And at the other side of the Viraja river, which is the border between the spiritual and the material worlds, he saw that the, the material energy functioning. So two energies at the same time he saw. But the, the devotee, and that's interesting, we are, when we become a devotee, by our attitude, uh, here we have heard about repentance and so on, we can change from material to spiritual. We can change, we can do that. We have the formula to turn material energy into spiritual energy. That's also explained in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. We can, by offering food to Krishna, we spiritualize the food. Hurts from material to spiritual. That, uh, yeah, a devotee at the campus of, of a university in America, he made an announcement. We will do an experiment. Change material into spiritual energy. You are you are welcome to attend the experiment and then 
many came and then the effort food to Krishna and distributed. <laughs> that, anyway, there was probably also a talk, but very interesting. That for but, but for this to do this to change from material to spiritual energy, you need to see think, things from a different level of observation. So hopefully, this Shimon Bhagavatam will give us this vision. 35. Evam chan mani kang mani hiya karto ajan asya cha varnayanti sma kavayo veda kuryani rit pate. Thus, learned man describe the births and activities of the unborn and inactive, which is undiscoverable even in the Vedic literature. He is the Lord of the heart. That we uh, will. So, this is a sentence with contradictions in it. The birth of the unborn. How it is possible? The activities of the inactive. So, we won't go in that right now, but Queen Kunti will go into that. In those verses, we will hear and we will dive into that. So, text 36. Svaidam Vishvan Amoha Lila Sva no so Savaitam Vishvam Amoha Lila Richat Savatati na Chachatismin Bhute Susatarit Matantra Svatvarhikam Shikati Satkunesa The Lord whose activities are always spotless is the master of the six senses and is fully omnipotent with six opulences. He creates the manifested universes, maintains them and annihilates them without being in the least affected. He is within every living being and is always independent. That, uh, <coughs> so, we are at first 34 was about the Lord's energy. We had then first 35 spoke about Paramatma, the unborn, the inactive with was activities. And 36, this first here is about Bhagavan. <laughs> so here text 37 and 38. Nasasya kachin nipun avaiti chantu komani sauti namani upani namo vachubi sutantu vato natacharyam natacharyam ivacha. The foolish with a poor fund of knowledge cannot know the transcendental nature of the forms, names and activities of the Lord who is playing like an actor in a drama, nor can they express such things, neither in their speculations nor in their words. So, so we have a few words here. Now, let's, let's first read also 38 and then come back. Saeva tatu pada vim parasya duranti viryasya ratanga pane yamaya yasantata yanu vritya pacheta tat pada sarojat gandam. Only those who render unreserved, un uninterrupted, favorable service unto the lotus feet of the Lord, who carries the wheel of the chariot in his hand, can know the creator of the universe in his full glory, power and transcendence. Unreserved, 
uninterrupted favorable service to the lotus feet of the Lord. So we have a condition and added here. We had a definition in 126 of pure devotional service. A vipum saparuda moya to bactorial adoxae. A haituka patiata yatma supersidoti. A haituka and a patiata that uh, without motivation and uninterrupted is called here unreserved, unre reserved, unreserved, and uninterrupted in this verse. Then it says favorable. That is a condition that does the word added to the definition of pure devotional service here. <coughs> Favorable. Of course, we have also heard that in Anya Bilasa Sunyam Ghanaka Mardanavadam Anakuligena Krishna Nutsilnam Bhaktautama. That um, Anakuligena, favorable. <coughs> so, uninterrupted and favorable. Yeah. It's it's said in the verse, the wheel of the the Lord with the wheel of the chariot in hand. How is this Lord called? You can write in the chat what's the name of this uh, this Lord? Parta Sarate, yes, Parta Sarate. In Delhi we have Sisirada Parta Sarate, right? You can see him in the Delhi temple. <coughs> End of the purport. Such favorable servitors and devotee are devotees of the Lord. <coughs> and by the grace of the Lord they can enter into the mysterious region of transcendence by the mercy of the Lord. By the mental speculators. But mental speculators remain in the darkness all the time. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord himself guides the pure devotees toward the path of realization due to their constant engagement in devotional service of the Lord in spontaneous affection. That is the secret of entering into the kingdom of God. <laughs> Fruitive activity and speculation are no qualification for entering. So it seems really hopeless for these poor karmis and jnanis. They are in darkness. What can we do for them? What is the hope for the Karmis and Gyanis? That uh, how can they, they get out of the darkness? What is their hope? What is their hope for those Karmis who are not engaged in the voicemail service? How can you give them hope? So please. So they have to hear from yes they have to hear from a pure devotee they have to hear from a pure devotee that uh, so uh, give them opportunities to hear krishna kata and other proposals that uh, how can can we, that uh, of the fruits of their activities to krishna that is what they should do but what we should do Give them prasadam, yes. Give them prasadam. Uh, so, yeah. But so, give them prasadam. We are opening some centers all over the world to give people the opportunities to hear Krishna Kata. That's what we can do. And even if they remain in the dark devotees will go to the dark and deliver the message to them out of the, how to get out of the dark. Some way or other engage them in menial service of Krishna and his devotees. Some way or another. Yes. So there is hope, even if they cannot understand Krishna in their present position. Text 39. 39. Sutta Goswami is hardly coming to a conclusion. Ate Adanya Bhagavanta Itam Yadvasudevekila Lokanate 
והובנתי שרפת מקמת מרבם נאיית הבויה פריבך תאוכרה. Only by making such inquiries in this world can one be successful and perfectly cognizant. For such inquiries invoke, invoke transcendental ecstatic love unto the personality of God, who is the proprietor of all the universes, and guarantees 10% immunity from the dreadful repetition of birth and death. Importance of the right inquiries. That, uh, so, Sutta Goswami is, is again them, referring them to the beginning where the sages were asking such nice questions. And he's also referring to this verse 1, 2, 10. Jivasya Tattva Jihnasa. That this verse is mentioning that you should. Preserve a healthy life just for self-preservation and th that you should ask questions that uh, uh, Tato Brahma Jihnas, now you have the human form of life, you have to inquire about the absolute truth. So now we will explain what, what is going to happen if you ask questions like that. If, the, if you devote the human form of life to inquiry about the Absolute Truth, then you will develop, finally, ecstatic love for Krishna. So this is so wonderful. And this is another benediction, a hidden benediction by Sutta Goswami. He's also benedicting the sages. Text 40. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Purnam Brahma Samitam Uttamas Loka Charitam Sakara Bhagavan Rishi Nishrasya Saya Lokasya Dhanam Tvast Ayanam Mahat The Shimad Bhagavatam is a literary incarnation of God and it is called, compiled by Srila Vyasa Dev that uh, the incarnation of God, it is meant for the ultimate good of all people, and it is, it is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. So now, here we, we hear about our incarnation, the Sriman Bhagavatam. That, uh, so, where did we hear about the ultimate good for all people it's uh, here yes here it's also said Shreya Nishreyasya that uh, the ultimate good for all people that uh, yes Ekantaka Shreya the sages question what is the ultimate good the answer was Savai Pun Saparuda Moya to Bhaktir Adoxia 126. Here it says Nisres Yasya Lokasya, which is good for all the people. Shimad Bhagavatam is good for all the people, the ultimate good of all the people. And now we will come to the sages' answer. To the last question, text 41, 42, and 43. We will read all of them and then come back. Tadidam grahayam asa suttam atma vatam varam sarva videti hasanam saram saram samutitram samutritam. Sri Vyasadeva delivered it to his son, who is the most respected among the self-realized. After extracting the cream of all Vedic literature and the histories of the universe. Text 42. Satu samsravayam masa maharajam pariksitam. Prayo Pavistam Gangayam Paritam Paramarshibihi 
Shukadev Kosfam and the son of Yasudev in his turn delivered the Bhagavatam to the great emperor Parikshit, who sat surrounded by sages on the bank of the Ganges, awaiting death without taking food or drink. And now, 43, that's the ultimate answer. Krishna Svar Dhammapangate Dharma Jnana Depisa Kaula Nashta Trishamisha Purunarka Dunodita. This Bhagavad Prania is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. So, in paragraph, the first paragraph here of this verse, Srila Papa describes the condition of the living entities in Kali Yuga. He says, in, and that's a famous statement, <coughs> a strong statement, in the Kali Yuga the population is just a royal edition of, animal, of the animals. A royal edition of the animals. So, Mother Narayana, she said that in her youth she has read, read a book, Animal Farm, which was very popular. Not only in the English speaking world, I read that book also in Dutch, it was translated that uh, around in the 60s. So, this book shows how people are nothing than different kind of animals. That so they have nothing to do with spiritual knowledge or godless religious life. Sir Papa writes, they are so blind that they cannot see anything beyond the jurisdiction of the subtle mind, intelligence or ego, but they are very much proud of the advancements of knowledge, science and material prosperity. Yeah. Naradams, Bhagavad Gita, 7, 14 and 15, yeah. the Naradams, or the Maya Paritajans. They can risk their lives to become a dog or hog just after leaving the present body, <laughs> for they have completely lost sight of the ultimate goal of life, ultimate aim of life. <laughs> so, so, well, what is an example of someone who risked their life to become a hog and a dog in their next life? Some dangerous occupation. That uh, We have the example in the Bhagavatam. Lord Indra, he became a hog. That, uh, so, some astrologer said to Prabhupada in India, that some prime minister became one of two dogs in Sweden. <laughs> Interesting. So the personality of God at Sri Krishna appeared before before us just like just little prior to the beginning of Kali Yuga. This is the purport. And he returned to his eternal home practically at at the commencement of Kali Yuga. While he was present, he exhibited everything by his different activities. He spoke the, the, Bhag the Bhagavad Gita specifically and, uh, and er eradicated all pretentious principles of rel rel religiosity. And prior to his departure from this material world, he empowered Sri Vyasadeva through Narad to compile the messages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And thus both the Bhagavatam and Srimad Bhagavatam are torchbearers for the blind people of this age. In other words, if men in this age of Kali want to see the real light of life, they must take to these two books only, and their aim of life will be fulfilled. <coughs> Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary study of Srimad Bhagavatam, and Srimad Bhagavatam is a summum bonum of life. Lord Sri Krishna personified. We must therefore accept Srimad Bhagavatam as a direct presentation, representation of Lord Krishna. When we can see Srimad Bhagavatam, we can see also 
Sri Krishna in person. They are identical. Then we have the last verse, the purpose telling us how we can hear with rapt attention. Text 44. O oh, learned Brahmins, when Sukadev Goswami recited the Bhagavatam, yeah, I, I will read the Sanskrit first. Tatra kirtayato vipravi parshir burite asa am satyagamam tatra nivishtas tatanukahat soham vaishra vaishyami yataditam yatamati. O oh, learned Brahmins, when Sukadev Goswami recited Bhagavatam there in the presence of Emperor Pariksit, I heard him with rapt attention and thus, by his mercy, I learned the Bhagavatam from the great and powerful sage. Now I shall try to, to, to make you hear the very same thing as I learned it from him and as I realized it. So, the purport, Sri Prabhupada writes, one can certainly see directly the presence of Lord Krishna in the pages of, of the Bhagavatam if one has heard it from a self-realized great soul like Sukadev Goswami. So, Srila Prabhupada writes, simply hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word Nivishta Nivishta to say that uh, means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of the Bhagavatam through the ears. That is the real process of receiving the Srimad Bhagavatam. Later you will hear in the seventh chapter that by oral reception into the ear, by, by uh, hearing with attention. Then, and then it's relished, relished. We heard that 114 Bibata Bhagavatam. So one should hear with rapt attention from the real person, and then he can realize the presence of Lord Krishna in every page. So Krishna is the Bhagavatam, it's in the pages of the Bhagavatam, how to extract, extract him, hearing with attention from the right person. So, the secret of knowing Srimad Bhagavatam is mentioned here, Srila Prabhupada says. No one can give rapt attention when one is not pure in mind. If you don't follow the regulative principle, for regulative principles, you, can, you, you cannot be pure in mind, you cannot hear with attention. No one can be pure in mind when it's not pure in action. You must live in goodness, action in goodness. No one can be pure in action when it's not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person at the very beginning, one can assuredly see, see Krishna in the pers in person in the, in, in the pages of the Bhagavatam. <coughs> so it seems to be a very difficult process, right? You need purity in mind, in action, in eating, sleeping, fearing, mating. But Srila Prabhupada he puts some mercy close here. He says somewhere, somehow or other. If you even if 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 you don't have all these qualifications, if you hear with attention, what does it mean? Some somehow or other. So does that mean one day I get it and the other day I don't? I don't get it. So my question to you, what does it mean, somehow or other? That, uh, what could be the meaning of that? Shri about writing that. That, uh, so, any doubts? By hook and by crook. So, how then the question remains, what does it mean by hook and by crook? How can we get it that uh, by hook or, or by crook? Yes, 
May I say? Yes, sure. Uh, the, the devotee must be intelligent enough to find any opportunity, you know, even sometimes unconventional uh, means may be necessary to cultivate uh, opportunities for devotional service. Mm. Uh, the the, the you, devotee must use his intelligence. Using his intelligence and then then it happens some way or another by using one's intelligence. There is one. I must recognize the opportunities that Krishna gives. Yeah. Recognize the opportunities that Krishna gives. And uh, any other views what what it means? Um, yes. Maharaj. Okay. Sorry, you go away, Prabhuji. I'll speak later. You go ahead, no, sorry. Yeah. I got a little restless by hearing this statement that purity of mind, actions in life is then is needed. And uh, like as uh, His Grace Petinath Prabhuji said that as devotee, we should have that intelligence. But many times it happens that uh, we don't have that intelligence naturally. It's as we evolve gradually and slowly with a lot of struggles and going through different experience, we develop that intelligence. So isn't there any room for that? Or is it only restricted to devotees? Or even non-devotees go through the process of evolving at spiritual dimension. Yeah, that's true. When, when I heard we have to use our intelligence, then I think, I, how unfortunate am I? Because I, all my life I'm doing the wrong thing, so I, it seems I don't have the intelligence was the hope for my... Somehow or other, Srila Prabhupada says, uh, yeah, it's true what you are saying. Advaita Krishna, what's your proposal? But isn't, isn't our coming to Krishna consciousness, it's an act of good fortune, according to Lord Chaitanya. Because um, we're just fortunate, because nothing qualifies us except that the good fortune of coming in contact with the devotees. So somehow or the other is like good fortune, you know, either yeah, that, by the that, mercy of... That's true. That it's a good fortune to be in contact with the devotees, mm -hmm. but that does not mean that you are Krishna conscious. For this, you still need further mer mercy. That, uh, yeah. That's my thought. Because... Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Mataji, please. Yeah, you just now made a very profound statement, Maharaj, mm -hmm. that it's eventually, yes, yes, that it's eventually our uh, attitude. And right now you reconfirmed it, that being into the contact of devotees doesn't necessarily mean that we are Krishna conscious, you know. Sometimes yeah. they happen to misguide us by getting ritualistic, you know, about Krishna conscious activities. Yeah, I, I was thinking when we discussed that many years yes. ago, this question, then one, one devotee said, somehow or other means by the mercy of a pure devotee. Mm -hmm. Like, and we discussed the example of King Raugana, he met Shad Bharat, and by, by his mercy, that uh, it somehow or other may also mean by any means, but what are these means? That, uh, So one may not be pure, but some some devotees said, and it's it, it's related with this inner attitude, as you put put it forward. But one one may be very desperate to hear that one may not be pure, but wanting to hear that uh, 
this. I remember Sheila Pope out when he was to one day hearing from his spiritual master in that village not far from Vindavan. Koshi, Koshi is the name. I've been there of Parikram, Koshi. And Sheila Pope was because he was traveling as a representative for a pharmaceutical company all over India and he was in Delhi and he heard that his spiritual master was giving a lecture in Koshi and, and he went to Koshi he went to Koshi and his spiritual master was giving a lecture in the evening and he said my spiritual master was speaking very high knowledge but I could not understand it but I try my best to understand it, to hear with attention. So that is desperate to hear and to understand, even if it's more difficult. That, uh, and then f being very repentive, and that's a good point, I think. That's, yeah. Mm hmm it is said also in uh, Parvat Gita 13.26, if you cannot perform Karma Yoga, then just hear with attention. Mm. That, uh, we can't hear many times because we are attached to sense gratification. The pure devotee can lift you beyond the uh, beyond, uh, our disturbed mind. That... Uh, Anyway, it means in in summary, I would say we have many disqualifications, but Shil Papad makes a point in a lecture. We must agree to hear. We must agree to hear. It it, 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 it indicates also we have to follow the four relative principles. Hearing with attention. It's not easy after so many years chanting Hare Krishna fixing your mind on Krishna not easy uh, my experience is I, I may think a little more of Krishna than before but still the mind is so strong that uh, Shil Prabhupada says some way or another that uh, Always hearing about Krishna. Whatever time you have, hear about Krishna. That, uh, yes. That uh, if you're working with your hands, you hear. Hear as much as possible. Some or other. We may hear 20 times or, or 100 times the same thing, but at a certain point we may get it, yes. Now, uh, that uh, I should not do that. I would, my all my attachment are futile. Let them go. That uh, so. This verse is last verse is also we can say the because um, in this. I'm a member of the Shastak Advisory Council, and we have a lot to do with hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is a science how do how we get knowledge, but this is the hermeneutics of the Bhagavatam. It says you must hear from the right person, from the right person that and we wrap that tension, we wrap that tension. That's the second condition that uh, and uh, the speaker must be qualified, must explain it according to the level of his realization, not higher. That will not, not touch the heart of the people on the level of the realization, of one's own realization. So we can all preach, but stay on the level of your realization. That, uh, so that is, if we hear from such a right person with rapt attention, then we can re realize Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. 
But yes, somewhere or other we must learn this art to uh, here we wrap the attention. It's a bit like a, a vicious circle. We can't hear with our attention because we, we are impure, right? We are impure. We can't hear, therefore, and focus our that and that. Uh, but hearing the Bhagavatam and hearing from the right person is the process to become pure. So, but the condition is you will, you must hear with purity of mind, which we don't have. It just looks like a, a vicious circle. But Srila Prabhupada said somewhere or another that by the mercy of a pure devotee, by any means, that, uh, yes, if we hear the Bhagavatam, we will hear a lot about inner attitudes, which we already heard here in this chapter, feeling repentant, and then the, the illusory ener energy is going to... Uh, move away if we hear with the proper inner attitude and so it's a process there is hope if we arrive if we hear from persons with that proper attitude then we can make advancement so we will stop for 10 minutes it's seven o'clock i think so 10 past seven we go with questions and we will start with uh, Shivam Prabhu in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So, Hare uh, Krishna Shivam Prabhu, what did you not, uh, what was your question about these verses you did not understand? Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam, please accept my humble obeisance. Hare Krishna, accept my humble obeisance. Maharaj, actually, I was not able to understand these starting verses. Uh, like they were say, uh, saying that uh, about subtle and uh, spiritual, gross and subtle forms. So I, I am not able to relate to Like, what is this gross and subtle form? And two verses are on this. Yes. So one who who wants to experience that the spirit soul different from the gross and subtle body, he must understand that he is different from his mind, even for his in, from his intelligence. He must understand that it, it's difficult, it's easy to understand, yes, I'm not his hand, right? Easy to understand. But Difficult to understand, I'm not my mind. That's more difficult. But self-realization means understanding that one is not the mind and that one comes out of, of the control of the mind. Out Coming out of the control of the mind. Most people are in the control of the mind. Mind say this, that, that. But the mind is an instru instrument that we can use, that, but we are not that instrument. That, uh, and that is then, if one realizes that, then one can see oneself as different from the gross and subtle body, and can also uh, perceive the super soul. And such a person in the purport is uh, is called a jivan mukti that uh, that uh, that yes jivan mukti realizes one's real identity which we are forgotten through to due to forgetfulness as your papa writes we are under the clutches of the illusory energy the Illusory curtains, Srila Prabhupada said, but when you engage in the voice of service, surely this illusory energy, it goes away. And we become, that's the purification, and then we understand our real identity. So that's the essence of these verses. That, uh, does that help, Shiva? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, and one more thing. Uh, can you again tell that, uh, that point, somehow or 
Oradan. Sama oradan. Ya Sama oradan Shila Prabhupada uh, writes in the last purport. Because the verse is about we should hear with rapt attention from the right person. So, and hearing with rapt attention is not easy. That uh, in, if we chant Hare Krishna, give attention to the Hare Krishna mantra is also not is, is not easy because the mind tries to divert us. So to do that, we must be in pure, pure in mind. Shil Papad says, and being but being pure in mind is not so easy. It begins with following the four relative principles. Then you are not influenced by so much by lust and anger anymore. It's it's less, but still one is not pure just by following that. Pure means no material desires, no rajas. But that that's so so. But still one should hear with a pure mind, but we don't have a pure mind. But Srila Prabhupada says, it's merciful and he says, somewhere or other we have to do it. Somewhere or other we have to do it. And, that's, and, and that is what we were discussing. What is this somewhere, some, somehow or other? That, uh, good, thank you. Any thank other you. questions? Yes? Shivan Pramu, anything else? Yes, thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Someone else? Any questions? That, uh, any discussion points? Yes, Maharaj. Like, uh, Hare Krishna, thank okay. you so much of giving so much of hope. Um, your lectures, your talks are full of hope, you know, for struggling, for strugglers. While in verse 34, you discussed about internal, external and marginal potency of Lord. And the second point, you said that uh, if a Lord helps or if he is willing, then our illusory energy gets subsided. Like uh, it's his mercy that the illusory energy gets subsided. Mm -hmm. So is it related? And then you said that by penance and engaging in devotional service, one proves his sincerity to Krishna. Yeah. So these all things, is it related to our choices and desires that... So the point you are making is, yes, we, we can get out of it by the mercy of the Lord. That's mm -hmm. one thing. But how can we get this mercy? That... Uh, how can we get this mercy to get out of it? That yeah. first part of the answer is become a recipient of mercy. Recipient. That uh, so first Krishna may give his mercy, but we must be able to receive it. So become a recipient of his mercy. And how do we get that mercy is by following these instructions here in the Bhagavad Gita hear sufficiently that uh, we heard in the beginning all these sages of Namasaranya they before hearing they were doing their morning duties they had a sadhana getting up early above and they were chanting having their sadhana, can be different kinds of sadhanas by these sages, but they, had, they all had generally, they had sadhana. So performing our sadhana first, and then here we are with attention. That, uh, and if we are serious in it, then the mercy will come, but it may come gradually, 
as we are not inclined to surrender immediately or we are too much com contaminated. It's like Mother Narayan is said, from Shraddha to Prema at a certain certain point in the process and that may different, be different for all of us but usually that's a sign of Anartha Nivriti. Then you feel repentant. I've, uh, I've done so much nonsense in my life that even when I became a dev devotee I did always the, the wrong thing and that repentance comes there that uh, and that mm -hmm. repentance is the the curtain of illusory energy becomes shadowly goes down by that and we will hear about that repentance at the end of the 19th chapter if marriage breaks it who so called offended Samikharishi and he condemned himself and he was happy when the punishment comes he was thinking I deserve it I deserve it when he heard the curse he was thinking let this this, uh, this sky bird or whatever ma magical thing the Brahmin created kill me at once I deserve it mm -hmm. that, uh, and that when we come in that position we become also very humble that uh, feeling insignificant and then this curtain is going away it's a long process for most of us but uh, it's a good sign in our spiritual life if that happens that uh, these are one of the points we heard many more many more points we will hear in the Bhagavatam so yes Maharaj thank you just one more thing that you said that when you repent that means you won't do it again mm -hmm. the real repentance mm -hmm. and many times it happens that even if we repent very seriously but the power have, of habit is so strong that unintentionally also we happen to repeat the mistake and then that guilt again comes back that I was not supposed to do it but I did it again so how this thing should be dealt with yeah it's uh, that process will repeat himself because we are our heart to make it soft and really pure sometimes Krishna has to do these things yeah we have the, I'm preparing chapter 16 of the 10th canto the pastime of Kaliya and Lord Krishna was dancing on the heads of Kaliya and pushing them down and causing great pain to the thousand heads of Kaliya and he, brought, he had to bring him to the point to the verge of death dying really and then his consciousness changed changed and then he surrendered that that's an example where where one goes to the end but there is also another example it's Ajamil Ajamil six canto the Ajamil he was he, is, he had this near death experience he was hearing from the from the Yamadutas and he saw this Vishnu Dutas and by hearing from them he got three blessings the first was he saw this Vishnu Dutas and he could never forget them anymore that uh, the second thing is he felt embarrassed for all nonsense he had done 
that and he and he came to the realization i will never do it again he got that determination from that and the third blessing he got from that he got his life his life was prolonged and then he took up his sadhana went to the north and attained the platform of pure devotion so sometimes it's very difficult for us and krishna has to help that but it's all individual and that uh, yeah Srila Prabhupada said and I said that before I think but that Mahmakandeya Rishi Prabhu asked Srila Prabhupada and this Krishna test us and Srila Prabhupada said yes Krishna tests us and Mahmakandeya Rishi said the does the test always become heavier heavier and heavier Srila Prabhupada and, and will there always be test? Srila Prabhupada said no. Once you have passed the test, you have passed the test. Then no tests anymore. But first first we have to pass the test. And uh, therefore Krishna gives us the test tests again and again. So that one day we can definitely pass all of them. And then our consciousness is freed from this harassment of all these material desires which keep, keeps us doing nonsense in this world again and again because that's what we are doing Palat Maharaj will say that that Punarpana Sarvda Sarvnenam we are doing the same stupid thing again and again and again that uh, the same sense gratification the same old story because of our contaminated heart but there is hope if Krishna gives us these tests even if you fail it's it's good news <laughs> you feel repentance you can make further advancement so does this help it helps a lot yes I think okay, thank but you just that. one yes. thing that you know krishna doesn't judge us uh, we are confident about it but people judge us especially with our failures and success hmm. yes but um, krishna is in our heart he sees our inner attitude and our sincerity that uh, mm. we don't have to consider what others say about uh, yeah others would just judge us that it's it's very dangerous to judge devotees very dangerous yes. because you cannot very dangerous. you cannot see the inner attitude of the devotee that uh, that uh, that's very dangerous so we should refrain from doing that and uh, see in our own heart that um, and if someone commits offense or whatever Krishna will take care of it we are not a judge he will take care of that if if they had mal intentions they are already punished by the material nature they will get punishment in the future as a reaction nothing we don't have to, to play the judge let it over to Krishna and let's look in our own heart good any other questions please and then I I thank you and uh, I think Sarva Bama Prabhu will continue tomorrow I will have surgery tomorrow and Maharaj, there are there were I think two three hands raised. They, they were writing? No. <coughs> Not much. I just, just need a minute. That's I have a question. Yeah, okay. Uh <coughs> Maharaj, regarding text thirty one, the analogy that is given, clouds and dust are carried by the air, but less intelligent persons say that the 
the sky is cloudy and the air is dirty. Similarly, they also implant material body conceptions on the spirit self. I'm struggling to try and understand this analogy. You know, what, what is it really trying to refer to? Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13, verse 13. One moment, um. mm -hmm. When we can see that all activities are performed by the body which is created of material nature and sees that the self does nothing, actually sees that um, the verse says his clouds and dust are carried by the air but less intelligent persons say that the sky is cloudy and the air is dirty so it means that activities are performed by the body that uh, and one sees one uh, identifies someone by the activities of their body by their position by their race by what they are doing that uh, but uh, the body, the gross and subtle body, they are, yeah, like clouds and dust that are uh, carried by the air. The air is, uh, is the soul, that's who we are. And we have this, we walk around with this con contamination, which is a subtle mind and a, a gross body that, uh, by that way we implant material conceptions of person. It's like this, it's like that, and so on. That, uh, so that, yeah. And in the purpose Shila Prabhupada writes how this same principle is applied to God, to the Supreme Lord. It is further confirmed herein that, that with our material eyes and senses we cannot see the Lord who is all spirit. We ca cannot even detect the spiritual spark which exists within the material body of the living entity. So, the spiritual spark does, has nothing to do with material nature. We are not moving our hand. This material nature is moving our hand under under the, the direction of the super soul, I only desire to to move my hand. But we say he moved his hands, but the super soul cannot move hands. That uh, it can only desire. So we see not the whole picture. It's 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 very deep these points, and that will be delved in further in the Bhagavatam. So we look to the outward covering of the body or subtle mind of the living entity, but we cannot see the spiritual spark within the body. We don't understand the person. And we don't understand the person is a spirit soul, spiritual body, which, which has a relationship with Krishna. We cannot see the spiritual spark. We cannot see and understand their real position as a servant of Krishna. And what kind of servant? We don't know. We see only the covering. But, and the covering is like cloud and dust carried by the air. And, but we see, the, we see the, the clouds and dust are contamination. We see the material contamination, but not the spiritual person, the real person. So, so we have to accept the living, the living being's presence by the presence of his gross body, because we cannot see the spirit. We cannot see as if he, if someone leaves his body, even the subtle body, we cannot see it departing. We saw we, 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 it's in the Bible. Our Sisupal merged into the body of Krishna, and everyone could see the spiritual spark merging into his body. But that was Krishna's mercy that everyone could see it. But normally we cannot see. So. Similarly, those who want, who want to see the Lord with their present material eyes or with material senses are advised to meditate on the gigantic external feature of the 
figure out who pa. But Shila Papa said this is not for the voters. That's those who cannot understand who Krishna is. That uh, and Shila Papa explains, yeah, that's like the president comes in his limousine, passes by, and uh, and we say the the president is driving there. It's the president is coming by. That uh, that's because the particular car we uh, are uh, related to the president. That's, a, that's an example given here. The clouds in the sky and the blue of the sky are better appreciated in this connection. Yeah. Although the bluest tint of the sky and the sky itself are different, we conceive the color of the sky as blue. But that is a general conception for the layman on, only because the sky is no color. You cannot see it. <laughs> that's so. Uh, and that's material life. We see only the coverings, the contamination, and not a person. And people live a whole life like that. They see, this is my husband, this is, this is a policeman, this is this, that. But they never understand the person. The person who is a servant of Krishna, who is eternal, who is engaged here. That, uh, so, that is what... I understood Srila Prabhupada explained in the purport and the meaning of this verse. So, and anything further? Uh, um, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Um, I had one other question. Thank you. That, that was very helpful. Um, in 36, text 36, um, <coughs> where it says the Lord whose activities are always spotless is the master of six senses and is fully omnipotent with six opulences. Um, and um, in, in the purport, Prabhupada is explaining you know, the six opulences, wealth, strength, fame, beauty, etc. I was just reflecting on this, that you say that Lord is completely spiritual, but are these attributes of wealth, beauty, um, strength, are these not material attributes or are they attributes we associate with material bodies or material? We learned in this, canto, in this chapter now that all energies for Krishna are spiritual and that's the ultimate reality. But Krishna can use them materially or spiritually. It's up to him. It's up to him. That, uh, but for him, they are all spiritual. That, uh, yes. That, uh, like, if we speak about knowledge, that uh, self-realized knowledge is transcendental knowledge, spiritual knowledge, transcendental. That. Uh, so he has unlimited transcendental knowledge, but he has also is also the material knowledge, material knowledge of the sign, all the sciences that we know in this material world, with that, which are all related to the relative words of the material world. It's all coming from him, and that is also unlimited. Scientists try to find. Uh, with the, the microscope, they are always going finer and finer and finer and finer and new components and new components. It never ends. Krishna is the smaller than the smallest and greater than the greatest. So Krishna is also unlimited in the material world. That um, something difficult to perceive for us was yes material and spiritual, they are both there, but he can use it as he wants. And uh, for, from his perspective, they're all spiritual. But 
upon, upon us, he can use them as he wants. But, um, so that's what I could say on this first. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes, thank you. Good. Then. Excuse me, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I also had a question. I wanted to uh, confirm if I'm if I have understood correct, so um, it's about the energy as well. So does this that one can be elevated by the same energy and degraded by the same energy mean that when the spiritual energy comes from the Lord and he can use it for any purpose? Is it this or is it so that we need to uh, spiritualize everything? in our lives and then the same energy can elevate us that would not usually degrade a, a simple answer to that i would say is that we must learn to see that every everyone is the energy of the lord and then it becomes spiritual that if you see a flower then we see oh what a beautiful flower krishna has created let me offer it to him. We take the flower, we offer it to Krishna. And spiritual vision and the flower becomes spiritualized, fully spiritual. But if we think, oh, this flower is for my enjoyment, let me sniff it. The flower is material. That, uh, it, that it will not become transformed into spiritual energy from our side. That, and it will degrade us, the other will uplift us. So that's a simple principle, yes. The energies of the yep. Lord are there, but we must recognize that it's His energies. His energies, not ours. And that it's for His enjoyment, not for our enjoyment. And then we are safe in the material world. From, from the moment you think, I and mine, we are in trouble. That uh, I want this and that for my enjoyment. Then we are in trouble. Then it will degrade us. Does that help? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Good. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I have one uh, observation or just a question on the we see on the penultimate verse on this chapter, the the one before the last verse. Is where Krishna actually says that um, when he's when he departs for the spiritual world back, actually, then um, he's accompanied by Dharma and Jnana. But this the interesting observation is that Lord Krishna is supposed to appear in Dwapar Yuga, which he did, but only for 125 or so or so years. Dwapar Yuga being 840,000 years plus or minus. So he really appeared like in the last minute of the upper yuga. And it seems like, um, of course, he, he accomplished the, the, um, the mission of uh, putting Yudhishthira Maharaj back on the throne and eliminating all these um, undesirable characters in, at the end of the upper yuga. But it seems like Krishna really appeared for us to be able to give us Srimad Bhagavatam because the day he goes, it's so actually Kali Yuga begins. So out of 864,000 years, he appeared in the last 125 years. And in the ninth canto, there's a very beautiful verse. Shukadev Goswami explains that. And Krishna, uh, Krishna says that um, all his pastimes is for his devotees that's going to appear in, in Kali Yuga. He says, Kalo Janishyamananam Sukadukatubhunudam. So I was thinking um, the purpose of Krishna appearing right at the last minute of Dwapar Yuga. I could say last minute because 125 years compared to 864,000 years. Mm. Like, can you make a comment on this? Or? So what did the inhabitants of Dwapar Yuga benefit from Lord Krishna's appearance as? Yeah. It brings up a, a bigger question. <clears throat> This is the question why that Krishna appeared and not at that moment and so on. But uh, 
why did he create the material world? That why? That uh, I was just today preparing the last part of the Kalia pastime, and I was reading a comment of Chiva Goswami on one of the first of the prayers of the Narapatnis. And I, I want to read that comment, I will read that comment now for you, for all of you, so you can have a taste what's coming in the tenth canto. That, uh, and so for what purpose really Krishna appeared at the end of Dvapara Yuga, it brings us back to the point that uh, why did Krishna, did Krishna create a material world? And Jiva Goswami gives an astonishing insight that uh, moment, uh, Jiva Goswami says that the real purpose of the prison house of, of the material world is as follows. So it says to, these are sentences he puts between the prayers of the Narapatnis and Krishna, to Krishna. And Narapatnis says to Krishna, all your devotees by glancing upon the Pradhan or the Sat, all your devotees were in the states of Sadhana in the previous day of Brahma, or else by your glance, simply by looking at them, to awaken them. This is stated in Padma Purana, to engage in activities in order to give pleasure to my devotees. This, thus the implication is that only coincidentally, are all the other living entities also awakened? This the, is the idea. This idea that the fault of him that they suffer it is by their karma and it's not a fault of you. So what what Shiva Goswami is saying? Because this this translation is a bit broken up in pieces. It's not yet published in English as far as I know, but Shiva Goswami is saying, Krishna, he created this material world not for the conditioned souls, but for the devotees. The devotees the, in the previous creation was doing, were doing sadhana, but they were not yet, they did not yet come to the platform to the platform of pure love of Krishna. They, they did not attain prema yet. For these devotees, he created this material world. And coincidentally, all the other jivas who are averse to Krishna were also awakened. That's quite a deep point that what a deep insight that Shiva Goswami has here. Yeah. And what love for his devotees Krishna has. That he, all the creation is for them. So that they can become purified and go back to the spiritual world. That, uh, so that Krishna appeared also at the end of Dvapara Yuga for his devotees so that they can advance further and and his appearance goes together with his disappearance he, he disappeared and the Bhagavatam appeared and the Bhagavatam is Krishna and we just by hearing the Bhagavatam and becoming absorbed in it we can go back to God it. and it fulfills the purpose of Krishna's appearance his concern of his effect with his devotees. So that is a side comment. And, uh, yeah, the <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, this all, is, yes. Yeah, I, I thought this is such an incredible statement when I read that. 
Mums, maybe I, I mean, I read before, but when I noticed it about three years ago, it just had completely transformed. I couldn't say transformed, I'm still a silly fool, but it gave me such an incredible impetus to really dive deeper into Srimad Bhagavatam. And if you, if you allow me, I will just read this. And it is in the um, Canto, um, chapter 24, in the text 61, he said, to show causeless mercy to the devotees who would take birth in the future, in this age of Kali, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, acted in such a way that simply by remembering him, one will be freed from all the lamentations and the happiness of material existence. In other words, he acted so that all future devotees, which means in Kali Yuga, by accepting the instructions of Krishna consciousness stated in the Gita would be relieved. So this is like incredible. And when I put it in that perspective that Krishna appeared at the end and then all his pastimes are in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I mean, for us, it just mind-blowing. I felt like it's very so sweet and so merciful of the Lord to appear for his future devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. So thank you all. Um, I wish you all the best with your further study of the Bhagavatam. Maybe if Krishna willing sometime in the future uh, we may all meet again. That, uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. can we just... Uh, can you please stay back for some time? Prashanta Mataji will be joining the meeting yeah, now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Hare Krishna. Well, thank you very much for taking time to educate us on Bhagavatam. You know, it was very nice to get your association. Uh, and hope your you know surgery uh, goes uh, you know, well and the recovery is quick. Yeah, we will know by tomorrow afternoon after Krishna will. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we pray for your quick recovery, Maharaj. Thank you. And you will be in our thoughts and we will pray to Krishna that everything turns out. Back to normal 100%. Thank you. Okay, better now. <laughs> better than now. All right. Will you still look the same after the surgery or will you look different? I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> that's the, the external view. But I don't know if my monkey face will change. But <laughs> I think Maharaj will look much better. Yes, Maharaj. You, will, you, you must look better than this. Yeah, you're okay now, but you look much better. Yes. <laughs> you are already a FLJ like son. I request any of you to kindly give back, give your feedback to Maharaj, like the words of appreciation and words of gratitude. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, I would, I'm, I'm so grateful. And uh, the most important part for me was the way you spoke. It was so with so much compassion and empathy that uh, I could just feel it in my heart that uh, you wanted uh, us to really grasp this content and uh, uh, understand, understand some things, these things. I'm so sorry for the disturbance. So I'm really, really grateful, Maharaj. Uh, the, the, uh, especially I learned how to speak and the time you gave so much to question and answers and uh, that actually churned the nectar out of what you were speaking. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. I hope to uh, get some more, uh, hear from, more from you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, you, ex you explain so nicely and sweet in a very sweet way, like a father does to his son. Uh, it is very sweet and like very patiently. We feel the same feeling. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Also, Maharaj, I really appreciated your teachings because it was strictly Parampara and strictly what's in Srila Prabhupada's books. And it's very, a great blessing for us to study Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, uh, which we are supposed to do. It says by regularly studying 
Srimad Bhagavatam, and this is what we are doing every day for two hours and more. So this is a great blessing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I also found that, uh, Prabhuji, I add to your comment, my appreciation for Maharaj, his, his incredible loyalty to Srila Prabhupada's purport, very inspiring and very heart churning. Just uh, absolutely going into everything and uh, reminding us that Srila Prabhupada has given everything. We just need to churn and churn and churn the purports and then everything comes out. So Mara, thank you for your incredible depth and loyalty to Srila Prabhupada's purport. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, just uh, reiterating what everybody has said, I think your systematic and stepwise going through each and every verse and explaining the translation and the purports was very useful. For me, um, I found it uh, the pace a little fast. I was having trouble trying to keep notes and uh, capture all of the points, but I understand that's just the nature of the course and we have a lot of material to cover. And I'm sure if you had more time, you could give us a lot more juice from each of the verses and each of the purports and so forth. But overall, I think you were very successful in giving us a good oversight introduction and impetus to study the, uh, the sections of the Bhagavatam that you covered so nicely. So thank you so much, Maharaj. I think we have reached the end we could have gone much, much, much deeper. It's unlimited. But, uh, sure. mm -hmm. Good. I'm really, really grateful to you, Maharaj. Really indebted for um, clearing up, you know, so many conflicts in, in the mind. And especially in, since last few years, I started depending on my academic studies and my psychological studies more. And I sidelined the spiritual, like, you know, mm -hmm. philosophical study. But as your lectures, you know, your each and every word was so full of like you know so detailed so positive that automatically the faith and the interest has been recreated again and the best part of you was that you would you are so specific like you never got digressed with any of the topics discussed and yet so open person to accept everybody's attitude, like, you know, attitudes, ideas, their disagreements. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thanks a lot. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I tried reaching Prashanta Mataji. I think uh, she's with the... Uh, she, she was supposed to come. I don't know why she's not picking up. But uh, I spoke to her half an hour back about this. And she was very, very thankful to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj has not only been teaching, he's also supporting VIG in various ways. Like he's the presentation grader for the Bhaktivedanta course. And he's also been supporting by correcting, by assessing the answer sheets of the students. And in other various ways as well. So, Prashanta Mataji was expressing her gratitude and she's very thankful to you for all this, for being a good support to VIHC and also for your scholarly teaching. Thank yeah. you so much. I spoke two years ago with Bhakti Charamaj about my eventual involvement in the VIHC in teaching Bhaktivedanta and so on. And uh, he recommended me that I should do that. That's, that's one of the points we discussed, not the only one. But uh, I see it as, in his, as his, his instruction. And by supporting the VRG, I'm uh, 
pleasing my goal much. That's one thing. The second thing is the I studied at the VIG from 2001 till 2011 when I took the whole Bhaktivedanta course. At the end of the Bhaktivedanta, Bhujan Prabhu has asked me to teach Bhaktivedanta. He asked me. I never thought of doing that, but now, ten years later, I'm starting to do that. The third thing is, I feel that this ten years course has changed my heart, and that's something you cannot repay. You cannot repay that. So, it's it's just normal that I'm trying my best to repay what cannot be repaid, but that, uh, so for these reasons, I'm, uh, and another reason is, of course, I'm, I'm like a uh, part of the family of the VHG. <laughs> that, uh, so, and I hope you can all become, uh, part of that family that uh, it is this courses Srila Prabhupada said by engaging in this speaking and hearing we can dev um, develop um, Vaikuntha atmosphere and that I've experienced during these courses it was heart changing and the best ex the best time of my life that uh, and of course, we can say the online courses are not the same, but we can feel that same energy even through the internet. That, uh, but it's important that, like when everyone puts up his camera, then we we see each other, and then yes, it's the question is of hearing somehow or other. She'll probably said hearing with attention. That. Uh, and the speaker and the hearer is benefit. So you are benefiting, I am benefiting. So the, sh the sun comes to here in Brussels, very rare. But, um, so thank you. And I'm looking forward to see you again in the near future sometime, online or maybe in Vrindavan if Krishna willing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.